Hey guys, and welcome to another video. Now today I'll be taking you through how to set up your 1760 folding propeller. Now these here, what we have are the blades for the 1760. So I'll show you how to set these up. Okay, so now I'll give you a brief explanation on how to set everything up. So let's start with what is included in the packaging. Okay, so when you buy two pairs of folding propellers, what you actually get is one clockwise set and one anti-clockwise set of propellers. So as we can see here, we have two pieces that are in the clockwise direction and two pieces that are in the anti-clockwise direction. And then we'll quickly move on to the folding propeller adapter. So what's included in this adapter set is two pieces of aluminium. And what these two pieces of aluminium do is they sandwich the propellers, the folding propellers between them. And you actually get... So they're positioned in those points respectively. And then you mount one of the pieces onto your motor. Now the mount here, it's important to note that it's an actual 12 millimeter distance between these two holes. So any motor that can mount a T-motor style propeller can actually mount these folding propellers very easily. So you shouldn't be afraid of purchasing them and having them mounted onto your, onto your motors. So as well as these two pieces of aluminium, we also have four screws. So let me get those out. We actually have four screws. And we also get four washers. These are, I think, um, they are rubbery, soft kind of nylon washer. I don't know if you can see them very clearly. Let me put them against the black background of the propeller. So you get these washers, you get four of them. So these sandwich in between the propeller and the aluminium to prevent wear and tear and also to give it a firm grip on the, on the mounting. Okay, so let's try and begin mounting it onto the motor. This is a 380 kV Sunny Sky motor. One of my faulty ones actually. I think these motors have an issue. But uh, it's for, for, for demonstration purposes, I think it will work well. So what happens is you get the lower mount, which is the one that has the big holes in the middle for mounting the propellers. I mean, for, for mounting this aluminum bracket onto the motor. So we place that on. And also, just as a side note, I noticed all the screws that, they, that are supplied with the folding propellers are actually Allen key screws. Now, of recent, I've had a few issues with Allen key screws in that the Allen key actually shreds the ins inside part of the screw and makes it almost impossible to remove. And uh, you wouldn't want such a scenario when the screw has actually ingressed all the way into the propeller mount, like this. So if you can see, it's actually flush with the propeller mount. And if ever this was to get stuck inside, it would be almost impossible to remove it. So what I decided instead was to use some star screws to mount onto the propeller and the motor. So I'll get those star screws out. So what happens is the star screws are actually a lot stronger and more resistant to, to wear and tear from screwing and unscrewing. So I decided this would be a, a safer bet to actually have these mounted instead of using the Allen key screws simply for that purpose. So, so let's get right into mounting the motor mount onto the motor. So the first thing you do is get your the lower mount, it's the one that has the, the bigger holes at the bottom in the center. So that goes onto the motor with the holes facing upwards. And then you place your M3 
star screws which are recommended into the holes and you screw them in so you screw one side in first but just make sure you don't over tighten it just to the point where it starts uh, locking up so that you don't have an imbalance and then you get the other screw and you screw that one in as well and now you can tighten both of them to the required tight tightness Okay, so that's done. Now the next step is to actually get your 1760 propellers. Make sure that they're facing the same direction. When they face the same direction, that means that you will have them not opposing each other. Which means that if you have clockwise propellers or counterclockwise propellers, you have to make sure that, that they match each other. That's very important. Because if you do it the other way, you may have you may have a bad day, basically. So you get the propellers, and then using the top mount, you place one of the rubber one of the rubber washers onto the mount. Onto this, there's an ingress in the mount itself. So you place it onto that ingress, and then you have the screw. In this case, for, for, the, for the mounting of the, mo of the propellers, you can actually use the Allen's, Allen screws because with these ones, the, the head sticks out a bit, which means that you can use a pliers to tighten it. So you push that in, and then you place the propeller upside down, just like the mount. You place the propeller onto it. And you do the same for the other side as well. You make sure you get your washer. You place it on. You pass the screw through both the washer and the mount. And then you place the propeller on to it. Then you f finally, because this propeller is, is sandwiched between both washers, you get the other washer and you place it onto the propeller. It might be a bit of a balancing act, but uh, just try and use a steady hand. And then the, the propeller mount that has been mounted onto the motor, you then place it upside down while trying to hold onto the screws at the same time. You place it upside down onto the mount and then you flip it over. So the, what this will allow, have allowed you to do is to get everything aligned properly and then you start screwing them in just slightly to make sure they don't move out. And just like that you've uh, mounted them. Now the next thing to make sure of is they are a bit flimsy and that's the last thing you want. You can also use a bit of Loctite for added security, but this is just a demo, so it's not the final setup. But I'd recommend using Loctite to lock the threads in place. So what you actually do is you, you don't even use a screwdriver. You actually use a pliers to tighten the propellers onto the motor. So you grip the head. It's a button head, so it's actually very easy to grip. And you just tighten it up to the point where you can feel it getting a bit tight. You don't want to over tighten it because you want the propellers to be able to fold, but you also don't want the propellers to, to fall when they, are, when they are held straight. So you do the same for the other side as well. until you also feel it biting and getting a bit tight yeah and just like that you've mounted your propellers onto your motor 
Now if you notice, when I hold it um, vertically, they don't actually fall off, which is a good indicator that you've tightened it well enough. But at the same time, you also have to make sure that you're able to fold them. So that's how they fold. So they allow you to fold it and uh, package it easily and also unfold when you're ready to fly. And if we compare the size to the 1655 first, you can actually see they have a significantly larger diameter when you compare it to the 1655s. So that diameter is actually what gives you more efficiency. And when you compare it to the 1650s, it's not that much bigger, but you can actually see it's a bit bigger, which will give you, I estimate it, it should have more efficiency than even the 1650s that I used initially. So yeah, that's how you set up the 1760 propellers and that's how you mount them. I'd recommend using Loctite, so just make sure you use Loctite because the last thing you want is your propellers falling off mid-flight, because that'll be a disaster. Yeah, and uh, make sure all the, the mounts are securely tightened onto the, onto the motor. So that's been my brief tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, kindly feel free to leave them below. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.